Sharing files from one cloud server to another often involves the use of networks, such as the internet. However, this changes with Volta file system, which is a cloud storage solution that allows you to share files between instances without any network usage and in a much faster way possible. Hello there. Welcome to this Volta Tech Talk. My name is Humphrey Pyre and I am at Volta Arke here at Voltra. In today's Tech Talk, join me as we discuss how you can get started with Volta file system, which is a simplified cloud storage solution for developers and system administrators. And to begin with, what's Volta file system anyway? Volta file system is a VAT IOFS based file system that allows you to connect multiple instances to a single volume to share and store files. Volta file system supports simultaneous read and write operations, which allows you to read and write files on the single volume using multiple instances. And by using Volta file system, you benefit from efficient file sharing and storage, which allows you to actually share and store files on instances in real time. With Volta file system, you benefit from simplified file management since you can actually group your files depending on the source instance that actually deliver these files to the volume. In addition, Volta file system encourages improved file collaboration and flexibility since multiple users can work on a single volume at the same time. And since Volta file system does not require any network to mount or share files, you benefit from improved and secure file transfer between instances since non-network usage is involved when actually moving files from one instance to another. And how Volta file system exactly works? When you deploy a Volta file system volume, it uses the VAT IOFS functionality or module on your instance to share and store files on this Volta file system volume. If you have multiple instances connected to the volume, they all use the VAT IOFS functionality to mount this volume and enable read write operations with other instances that are interconnected to the same volume. And so, based on this background, let me take you right into a demo where we shall actually see Volta file system in action. In this particular demo, we shall deploy a Volta file system volume and attach this volume to an Ubuntu 24.04 instance and another Windows Server 2022 instance in order to write, read, and share files between these two instances. And so, without any further ado, let me take you right into this process. And to get started with our demo process, right within the Volta customer portal, I have already deployed two instances. One is server one, which is running the Ubuntu operating system, and one is server two, which is running the Windows operating system, and both of these servers reside in the Volta New Jersey location. And to get started with Volta file system, let's go ahead and expand this cloud storage group right here and click file system from the list of options. Right on this Volta file system page, let's click add file system. Now let's select a storage location in which my target instances are actually located. Volta file system only works with instances in that particular location. So for my case, I have my two instances in the Volta New Jersey location, which is New York. So I'll keep the 10 GB storage volume selected and let's give it a label such as VFS and click add file system. Now give this just a second to load and you can see that we can manage this Volta file system volume. And if you navigate down to attachment, you can see that our servers are listed because they reside in the same Volta location. And to get started with mounting this, let's first of all try to mount server one by clicking attach. So you can see that we have this simple error here. This is because our instance memory backing is not set to shared. So let's click this particular option to change the instance's memory backing to shared. So let's click update. And in most cases, after changing this option, it does reboot the instance. So let's give this process just a little bit to load. And now you can see in this prompt that we have successfully updated the memory backing for server one to shared. Let's do the same for server two by clicking attach and setting the memory backing to shared to update the instance and reboot it. So you can see that we have another prompt, which is for the Volta file system server two that has also been set to shared. So we can now safely attach both of these instances to this Volta file system volume. So let's go down to attachments again 
And this time around, click Attach for Server 1 to attach this particular instance. And you can see that we have a newer prompt, which is File System Attached. And right within Attachments, you can see we have attached Server 1 with a Start Attached. Let's do the same for Server 2, which is the Windows Server. So, now that both instances are attached to this Volta File System volume, let's go ahead and configure each of the instances to actually write files and share files in between them using this Volta File System. So, I already have access to my server's SSH session right here for Server 1. So let's go ahead and first of all list all storage devices on this server. And now to actually use Volta file system, let's first of all verify if the VAT IOFS module is loaded. And you can see in this kernel output that we have VAT IOFS loaded for this particular instance. So now let's go ahead and create a new mount directory where we shall actually mount the Volta file system volume so that we can read and share files to it. And let's call the directory VFS. Enter the sudo user password. And now that this is done, let's go ahead and mount the Volta file system volume. But before we do that, let's first of all navigate back to the Volta customer portal. And right within the Volta customer portal, let's keep note of this mount tag ID right here because we need this mount tag in order to mount the Volta file system volume on the Linux instance. Let's go ahead and select this mount tag and copy it to the clipboard. And if we navigate back to the SSH session, Let's use the mount command with the option T and the VAT IOFS file system and paste our Voltra file system mount tag, which is 7995741. And now let's specify our mount directory, which is mount VFS. So you can see now that we have mounted our Voltra file system. Let's go ahead and view the disk usage information to verify that we have access to it. And you can see this particular output that our mount tag is 799 and it's available with a size 10 GB and uses this mount directory right here. So let's switch to this directory and try writing files to the Volta file system volume. So now that we're in the mount VFS directory, let's list all files here. You can see that the directory is empty. And now let's simply add a simple file right here, which is hello.txt. You can see that we, ca we actually have write privileges to this directory. And if we list files, the file is there. Let's try this again with a newer file, which is hello world.txt. And if we list files again, we also have hello.txt and hello world.txt files stored on this folder file system volume. And to actually verify that this is working correctly, let's go ahead and configure server 2, which is the Windows server. And to get started with our server 2, I have established an RDP connection to this particular server 2 instance, which is the Windows Server 2022 instance. So let's just open a new Chrome tab and let's access these two web pages, which is one for Fedora people that stores the VAT IOWIN driver and one for WinFSP. So on Windows, VAT IOFS is not supported natively. However, you simply have to install the VAT IOWIN driver and the Windows file system proxy package right here to enable a new VAT IOFS service we can use to actually access our instance. So to verify that nothing is mounted here, let's go ahead and access this PC. And you can see that we only have one storage drive, which is the root storage drive on this particular instance. So let's go ahead and download the latest package for this particular VAT IOWIN driver. And now let's look for the .exe file right here and download it. So let's do the same for WinFSP, just download the installer. So first off, let's install the VAT IOWIN drivers. So open this file, and now right here, let's accept the license terms to install the plugins right here. Let's click Next, agree to the terms in the license agreement, and let's keep these default options enabled. Let's click Next, and now let's install the VAT IOWIN drivers. So now that the VAT IOWIN installation is complete, let's just click finish to actually close this dialog and install any additional packages right here. So now the installation is successful. Let's just close this window and let's open the WinFSP package and click next. I'll keep the defaults selected and let's click next again and install WinFSP on this particular server. So you can see WinFSP is now installed here and we have the VAT IO Win drivers. And so now that both packages are installed, 
let's go ahead and open the run dialog by pressing windows key R and enter services.msc. And now that we have access to the system services, let's look for the VAT IOWIN service. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that on this list, we now have a new service, which is VAT IOFS service. So let's just right click and select properties right here. Let's set the uh, startup type to automatic to allow this service to automatically start at boot and just click service status to actually start the VAT IOFS service. Let's apply changes, verify the service is now running. And now let's click OK. And let's close this services window. And if we go back it to the, this PC section, you can see that we have a new volume right here with our mount tag and 10 GB of storage as we deployed it to the Voltra customer portal. So if we open this particular disk right here, you can see that we have some two files, which are hello and hello world. If you remember correctly, we did write these files from the Linux instance. So let's actually add in some new files right here. For instance, let's create a new folder here and let's call it greetings from Voltra. And let's actually add another file right here and let's give it a name, something like, hello, this is the Windows server. And if we now see in this particular disk right here, we have two files, greetings from, greetings from Voltra and hello, this is the Windows server. Hello, this is the Windows server is a .txt file while greetings from Voltra is a directory or a folder. So if we navigate back to this SSH session, you can see that last we had these two files right here. Now let's list the files again. And you can see that we have a couple of more files, which include these particular files that are written from Windows and they have that hyphen simply because these two instances have different file systems and file and directory naming structures. So just like that, we have used the Volta file system to actually mount a volume to the Linux instance and to the Windows server instance for the purpose of sharing files with simultaneous read and write operations at the same time. All in all, in our demo process, we have actually created a Volta file system volume and mounted it on a Volta Linux instance and a Volta Windows instance. To verify that we can indeed share files, we did create sample files of the Linux instance and the Windows instance. And just like this, Volta file system enabled file sharing between the instances, with both instances able to read and write files to this particular volume. And so, just like that, you can use the Volta file system on multiple instances to not only share files, but also improve collaboration if multiple users are writing to the same volume at the same time. And so, I hope you did find this Volta Tech Talk useful. If you did, I'd like to wish you the best for your next Volta file system deployment, mount instances, and share files. Once again, thank you for watching and see you in the next Volta Tech Talk.